Hello, everyone. How are you? I see that it's about a little after 7 o'clock, so I was going to begin the concert. And tonight we don't have any written programs, but we do have me, who's going to announce every one of the tunes today. You see a lot of guitars up here. And uh, in the beginning of the concert series, when both Robert and I, Robert Watson and I, were trying to decide what we should have monthly, we figured it'd be a good idea to at least have titles that allowed us a little bit of uh, room to change things around if we wanted to. So, uh, from the Renaissance to the present day sounded like a pretty <laughs> vast amount of time that I could use. And closer to this concert, everyone, I actually started thinking about doing more contemporary music. And I'm going to be taking a chance this evening in that I'm going to be playing you several of my own compositions. Uh, and thank you for that. <laughs> Uh, but to let you know that most of my compositions are not really in the classical style. They're a little bit more in a popular music vein, although uh, they have the roots, of course, in classical composition because I did compose a lot of classical music. So I hope that you'll enjoy those renditions. But I'm going to start off very traditionally with my guitar from 1830, Meyercourt, France, built in 1830. I love the sound of this instrument in this beautiful chapel. And so I'm going to play several pieces from the Renaissance and from the classical period to start with. And then I'll move, yes, uh, raised hand. Uh, this instrument was built in 1830. And the name of the person that made it? We actually don't know the luthier's name, but we do know the location of the area where it came from. It was Meyercourt, France. Meyercourt is an instrument building uh, city, very well known for that, primarily for stringed instruments, but also for plucked string instruments like guitars as well. But it was called a guitar, not a lute? This is not a lute. Yeah. Uh, in fact, to let you know, anything in the guitar family is always what we have, what we call a flat back instrument. The lute is always a round back, like the oud. The oud is really the, the instrument that the the, the Western European a lute is made uh, to designed after. So it was the Spaniards who started this flat back design with a vihuela, which is very close to the size of this instrument. This instrument, again, is a 19th century guitar, and as you can see, quite small uh, as compared to a modern guitar. So this is the size of the modern guitar that kind of got its shape by around the late uh, 1800s, beginning of the 1900s. And by the way, since I have these instruments up and around, uh, I wanted to share with you the different instruments that I have in my collection. I couldn't bring them all. My wife wouldn't let me bring them all. But I went to my closet and I found a couple of them, at least one, that I haven't had out in live in concert for probably 10 or 15 years now. Um, this is a Miguel Rodriguez guitar, built out of Cordoba, Spain. But what's unique about the back and sides is that it's built from the, uh, a church door. And so the maker, the luthier, saw that they were going to get rid of the wood. And this wood was brought back from the conquistadors. So this is from South America, a very long time ago. It's Brazilian rosewood. Now, uh, what, what you see here is, uh, is the lighter shade is called sort of a sapwood mixed in with the rosewood. So again, I record quite frequently of this, but I don't really bring it out that much. It's, it's a very valuable instrument, so I don't take it out that, that often. And when I started playing it, I went, oh, it's, 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 uh, it wants to be played a little bit more. I could tell that it needed a little bit more love and affection. So I'm bringing it out here in public to at least give it a, give it a, a voice. And then this other instrument is a flamenco guitar, a flamenco guitar by Miguel Rodriguez. Back and sides is cypress, uh, and so that's a very different type of wood. And I'll say a little bit more about each one before I play it, and you'll hear the unique features of each one. The instrument over there is built by a San Diego luthier. His name is Len Laviolette. That's a custom-built instrument uh, to my specs, and I'll say a little bit more about that when I start playing on that.
first piece I'm going to play is by a man named Robert Johnson. And if you know anything about the blues, that's a name that you've probably heard before. But this is Robert Johnson from around 1530. <laughs> Different Robert Johnson, okay. I won't be playing any blues today. I love the blues, but I'm not playing that today. microphone is not amplifying anything, so you're just hearing the natural sound of the guitar. That is for the live stream. Next is one of my favorite gentle tunes that, I've, that I recall when I used to listen to recordings of Andres Segovia. When I was very young, my dad had those recordings at home and played them. And for some reason, I distinctly remembered this one. It's entitled Cancion del Emperador, The Emperor's Song, by Luis de Narvaez, Spanish vihuelist. And uh, what, th what uh, this composition actually was written, it's actually, I, sh I should say that it's intabulated by Luis Narvaez, meaning he took the music from Josquin de Pre, who was a famous composer of the Renaissance, and took his music, his vocal music, and tabulated it, put it on a string instrument, de, vi de vihuela. So it's a song that's been intabulated by Narvaez. Thank you. 
Next is a piece entitled Guardame las Vacas, Keep Watch on the Cows. This is also by Luis de Narvaez, uh, and it's actually one of the first versions of theme and variations that's ever been kind of written down. We know that musicians were doing that well before that, but this is the first time that we see it in written form. So this is a, the theme too. Very interestingly enough, everyone, if you were to play Actually fits pretty well with it. It's surprising. You can actually play the variation at the same time as you would uh, green sleeves. For this next piece, I need a little bit of electronic help here. I was going to set this up earlier uh, to change my pages, because I'm using my uh, iPad to, to read my music, so 
if I go like that, it will t turn the page. I don't have enough time to touch it to turn the page. And this is a piece that I really would love to play for you, and I'm going to, of course. Uh, it's entitled Fantasia by Alonzo Mudara. And I have to say, I think that uh, Mason Williams listened to this tune and created... Classical gas. I'm almost certain of it. it because so much of it sounds like what uh, Mason Williams came up with in 1968. At any rate, it's pretty far out, even for its, uh, the standards of the, of the time. For one thing, um, it's, it's supposed to imitate the sound of a harp. And so there's a, a lot of these lines. You hear a lot of these lines, and then you hear these chords going through. It's an introduction at first, but then it gets into a very interesting part that sounds quite modern when it does this. It goes through a bass line, up, but what it's doing is, on the top, it's using this note here. It's a D sharp, and there's an open D played against it. That's called a cross relation, and they do that in the Renaissance. And so when you hear this line going, you're going to hear that going through. It's a dissonance that they absolutely accepted. Um, but it's just fantastic. It's re really interesting. So, Fantasia by Alonzo, Alonzo de Modara. Interesting composition. It's just, it's, it's just fabulous. It's just amazing. I love that piece. <clears throat> Next, a few classical pieces. Um, the first by Fernando Sor. And I have a history with this particular piece of music in, in that it's an uh, etude in B minor. And uh, the reason that it, I have a particular history uh, with it is that when I was in the Segovia Master Class in 1986, I was privileged to be a, a participant in the 1986 Master Class at USC. And the way you run a Master Class 
is uh, you're all on stage at the same time, and uh, when you have your lesson, there's an audience present. And so this was at Bovard Hall at USC, uh, and about over a thousand people, and it was always filled every night. And there were 12 of us who were chosen to play. Six of us would play each night. And so uh, we had our repertoire predetermined. We sent in what we, what we played, and then it was chosen for us what we were going to play for Segovia. Segovia would then give the lesson for that. The reason for that is that there wouldn't be any duplications. And so one of the big pieces that I had to do was a Chacon by, by Bach, which was enormous, and that scared me half to death. And uh, as several other compositions as well. So for my first composition, it was a piece by a Mexican composer named Manuel Ponce. And it was attributed to a, a, a Baroque composer, because in those days, when Segovia was, com was uh, a touring, he needed more repertoire. So what he would do is he would ask some of his composition, comp composing friends to write music, and then they would attribute another composer's name to it. So it was a gavotte by Alessandro Scarlatti, really written by Manuel Ponce. And Manuel Ponce was a very good friend of Segovia's. They spent a lot of time together, very dear friend. So at any rate, that was the first piece that I would play. I started playing it, and after two notes, he said, wait a minute, stop. Uh-oh. <laughs> Um, he says, I can tell by the very first couple of notes how old someone is. And when I hear them play fast, I go, oh, very young person. Oh, okay. He said, play it slowly with grace. Play it slowly. This was kind of a theme with the whole master class. A lot of us who were young were trying to show off and play fast, and he wouldn't have it. So at any rate, I continued the piece. And then he started to get a little bit more increasingly agitated, and that really brought me nervous, because I could see through the, through the corner of my eye that things weren't quite right. And he says, excuse me. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to imitate his accent. And he said, this composer or this arranger that has put this music together is a criminal. And so I had, and I didn't know this, but I had purchased an edition by uh, a man named M Miguel Ablones, who Segovia said illegally took that recording uh, the music from a recording and did not ask for the rights for it. And he said that Manuel Ponce's widow was not getting any royalties for this, and that made him very angry. He said, we're not going to play this piece. Do you have another? <laughs> and at that point I thought, and this was my first piece, I thought, okay. And then I was running through my head all the repertoire that everyone was playing because I couldn't duplicate someone else's, you know. And so at any rate I thought, well, I'll bet you no one's playing this, you know? And I was taking a chance because it's a very simple etude, a B minor study by Fernando Sor. And I started to play it, and he goes, oh yes, very nice. And as I played it, he started conducting me through the piece. At that point, I thought, I guess I made a pretty good decision. And I did, I followed him while he was composing it. And uh, I really love those moments every time I play this particular piece. So uh, this B minor study by Fernando Sor. Oh, by the way, on a guitar that Fernando Sor would have played. This is a, an exact duplicate of what uh, type of guitar he would play.
Next is a piece by Mauro Giuliani. And uh, Mauro Giuliani and Fernando Sor were the most important guitarists and composers of the 19th century. Very important uh, people. And this particular piece here is a theme in variations, but on the uh, theme of Handel, as I mentioned. And so I wanted to represent at least Sor and Giuliani if I was going to play on this particular instrument here. So this is Giuliani's theme and variations. A the uh, a variations on a theme by Handel.
right, so that's it for this particular instrument. Question, yes. Oh, oh no, well this is first. This is definitely first, the, the headstock that looks like this, more plain. And they, you know, that's sort of the mark of a maker. Uh, the makers have different distinct headstocks. So you can tell a Martin from a Fender or, you know, or a Gibson. But um, in, in this day, it was, the design was just to be as simple as possible, as you can see in this particular guitar here. So now, when we get to this Rodriguez, uh, this is a real distinct type of uh, headstock with this particular design here. If you ever see this, then you know you've got a Miguel Rodriguez guitar. Uh, the, the unique features of the headstock here. So any other instrument's going to have a little bit different, slightly different. And that's, that's how you can tell what it is or, or where it comes from. Oops, that was good. <laughs> so next, I'm switching over to this classical guitar, which is the one that I had mentioned is made from a church door. And this one's not real loud either. It's a fairly quiet instrument as compared to another Rodriguez that I have, which is a much stronger instrument. But as I mentioned, I wanted to be able to play, take this guitar out of the closet and let it really Uh, the strings I have on it are ones that duplicate the sound of uh, gut strings. So when you hear these sound, it, it, it's a more of a gut type of string. It, it does, it's not a little powerful projecting, but a, a, a very mellow and sweet. And uh, much quieter to the bass, it's not as strong as, as my flamenco guitar is going to have a much stronger bass to it. Now on this instrument, I wanted to play for you a couple of Targa pieces. Francisco Targa, Spanish guitarist. Oftentimes I play the usual like uh, Capriccio Arabe and all of that, but tonight I'm gonna play three mazurkas. Uh, one that I play frequently here because I just love playing it so much. But the other two I've not played um, I don't think out in a very long, long time, and I wanted to be able to play them on this instrument for you. So three mazurkas. The first one is entitled Adelita. The second one is Mazurka in Sol, which is Mazurka in G. And the next one is Mazurka in A minor, <laughs> in A mole. So we have three different uh, mazurkas. A mazurka is much like a waltz. It's the traditional song of music of uh, Poland. In fact, the most important mazurka composer was Frederick Chopin. And so you will hear uh, the feature of, of a mazurka is usually a lilting rhythm. It is a dance, yes. It is a, a stylized dance, meaning that uh, one would not actually dance to it, but it's a dance form. Uh, the early mazurkas, yes, you would. But these mazurkas that you hear by Chopin and other classical composers are definitely more for the form. And what you're listening for is the fact that it's in 3-4 meter, too. It's, they're always in 3-4, like a, a waltz. So the first piece is Adelita, and then I'll go into mazurka in sol, and then mazurka in e minor. Thank you. 
next to the flamenco guitar. And this is, again, a Rodriguez. You can see that the shape is absolutely the same. It's identical, different woods. Back and sides are cypress, Spanish cypress. Top, cedar. Usually a flamenco guitar is spruce, but this is a cedar top flamenco guitar. And you probably can see that it looks quite beaten up. That, that's, that's not mine. I did not do that. This is a second-hand guitar for me. I bought this from someone else, and they uh, were, uh, they were, they, they played. They played a lot, and they played in Spain, and um, it didn't matter to them what was going on there as long as that instrument was sounding good, and this was a really good player. Uh, at any rate, um, when I brought this to uh, uh, an important luthier, and I wanted to get his advice, should I buy this guitar or not, you know, and he played one note, he goes, he said, buy it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's all I needed. Was his was his saying, get it. He said, Fred, get it. Okay, I'll get it. I'll buy it. So, so flamenco guitar is much brighter. It's a brighter sound. Because, for one, there's a lot of strumming going on. So you as soon as you hear me play even even a one rascado. <laughs> You see, whoa, that thing really screams, yes. This is a Miguel Rodriguez guitar, yes. Mm -hmm. So uh, the one that I played prior was also a Miguel Rodriguez. This is the same maker, same maker. And, and so also you want a lot of projection in these guitars. So it projects, and, and you play it pretty hard too. So I'm not going to play this guitar like I played this one. Uh, it's going to be a stronger kind of a, an attack. So I'm going to play now one of the first of many of my originals. Now this one is a little bit more in a Spanish and flamenco style. It was commissioned to be in a flamenco style, yet they could not uh, take an existing flamenco piece because they would have had to play royalties on it. And so instead, they hired many San Diego musicians to write these Spanish pieces. Each of us got about maybe five or six that we did. We would submit them, and if they took them, great. If they didn't like them, guess what? We did all that work and we got paid nothing. But if they did get in, we got paid very well. And we still continue to get royalties on these particular compositions here. So this is a, a piece entitled Granadinas. Now, there's some repetition built into it because part of the parameters of the composition were that it needed to be, could be played 30 seconds in its entirety and still sound complete or sound like you know there was a thematic material or one minute or three minutes. So the entire piece is about three minutes long, but you'll hear several times where it repeats itself and that's kind of built in. It wasn't that I ran out of ideas, everyone. <laughs> I had a job to do. But I still continue to play it, and I love it.
Now, yes. It's okay. That's okay. I didn't hear the second part. I saw that you. I heard that you're doing a report, which is great, fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> oh, it's actually not. <laughs> I mean, I, I just can't help myself. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, yeah. No, when I play that kind of music, I, I sometimes I, I just involuntarily, you know, kind of kick my feet around. Well, th there would definitely be a dancer that would be dancing with the proper shoes on that would that would uh, do the actual flamenco dance to, to that. But but I wasn't certainly trying to play just do a flamenco dance while I was playing. <laughs> you 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 would you wouldn't come to a concert of me doing a flamenco dance. That's for sure. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's great that you're doing a report though. For which, what, what school? Uh, Grossmont. Grossmont. Yay! That was my college. I, play, I taught there for 39 years, full time. Yeah, excellent. Good. Good for you. Go Griffins. <laughs> All right. Well, I was looking at the time. I've got way more music than I probably should have here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch gears here. Okay? I'm going to switch. And I, I do love playing on this guitar, and I'd like to play more on it, but we'll see. Let's just see how it goes. But I think it's time to introduce this other instrument that I have here, and that is a um, Len Labulette guitar. And this instrument uh, was, I, I uh, ordered it custom, you know, because there were certain parameters I needed. First, I said I need a pickup because I need to be able to play it amplified. Uh, I do want a cedar top because I do like cedar tops. Uh, I, I like rosewood, and I need a cutaway, too, because if I'm going to play any popular music, I do like to have a little bit more room and make it easier for myself to do that. And so uh, he did, and, and he made, he's made several for me. I've got a baritone guitar, a couple of, of guitars like this, too. And so um, it's, it works. It sounds good as an acoustic instrument, but I've got a couple of pieces of music that I'm going to play for you that I've recorded in the past. Um, it's interesting, I've record, recorded and written so many pieces of music and I hardly ever play them out because they're all in re on records, you know, so probably, you know, 10 or so records with uh, a lot of music on them. And so I thought, well, you know what, I know that it's usually a classical venue here, but I'm gonna, I wanted to play a couple of those tunes for you. And so because of that, uh, the reason I'm using the amplifier is I have a few of the tracks from my albums in which I'm playing the other instruments and they're accompanying me to, during the process. So the bass you hear on there is, is me, and, and the keyboards and all the other stuff is, is also. Uh, but I'm going to start off first with a piece of music without those tracks, and one that I, I composed for my wife, Amy. And um, it, the, the title of the song is Child of Soul, S-O-L, uh, the symbol for the sun, of course. Um, I met her in high school, so uh, we've been together for a very, very long time and we still are. Uh, we have two kids and we have three grandchildren. And when I met her in French class in San Diego High School in 1974, uh, I was quite enamored and I, uh, I didn't play classical guitar yet. I was just playing steel string guitar, but I was writing songs a lot. And so I wrote a, composed my first song for her, one of many, uh, and it was entitled Child of Soul. It comes with lyrics, and it has, you know, I'm singing on it and everything. You're not going to get that version today. You know, you're getting, no, you're getting version two. You're getting version two. Uh, but there's a little story behind this, uh, as well as uh, you know, the description of why, why uh, uh, it's called Child of Soul. And uh, so many years later, I, uh, one of the hardest things for musicians to come up with is a band name and a name for their songs. You know, a lot of times you have working titles. You know, this is... You know, uh, Paul McCartney's Yesterday was initially called Scrambled Eggs. I mean, that's, what was it, Scrambled Eggs? Anyway, so, until he came up with, you know, the, the, the lyric and the title. And so, uh, I composed this around Valentine's Day, and I said, okay, this is, this is great, I'm going to make, make it a Valentine's Day song, but what should I call it, you know, what, 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 I, what am I going to call it? So, initially, uh, I had a working title for it. It's going to sound a little weird. Um, and I was playing in a band at Grossmont College. We had a faculty band that was playing together. And for one of our albums, we happened to just be writing a lot of music for our spouses. So my, uh, my uh, friend 
Steve Baker composed a song for his wife, Mary, M-A-R-Y, and, and he composed a song called Mary, M-E-R-R-Y, Is My Heart. And we thought, oh, that's nice, you know, that's, that's wonderful. So anyway, that kind of came to mind when I was writing this, and I said, hmm. So I named it, and my, my daughters loved this when I first named it, Amy is my gallbladder. <laughs> It was a joke, obviously. But my kids would always say, Dad, play the gallbladder song. I said, no, no, it's, it's not that anymore. It was, it was a joke. It was a joke. So anyway, to, to the girls, that's what this is, is the gallbladder song. But anyway, I thought about it, and I went, wait a minute, I composed that song, Child of Soul, so many years ago, you know? And that sentiment was still absolutely there, if not stronger. And so I decided, okay, I'm going to name it Child of Soul, and this is going to be Child of Soul 2, but I just don't put the 2 on it whenever I announce it. So this is Child of Soul 2. And my good friend Peter Sprague always says, this is a ripoff of Eric Clapton. So there you go. He's, and he's joking too, sort of. <laughs>
Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, here's a song entitled, very weird title, In the Champagne Room. So as a working musician, I performed for many years at, at La Costa's, in La Costa's Champagne Room. Beautiful dining room, five nights a week. And um, this was for about a year and a half. As a matter of fact, I remember seeing Arsenio Hall there. And uh, he came up to me and he said, I really like your music, sounds great. Thank you, Mr. Hall. He says, oh, you know me? And I said, yeah, I know you. <laughs> so he went back and sat down. And then at the end of the evening, um, one of his uh, minions, I guess, one of his, because he had an entourage with him, came up and said, uh, Mr. Hall would like to see if you'd like to play on his show. Okay. <laughs> he says, so give me your contact information. We'll get in touch with you, and we'll see when we can get on, on the show. I went home, and I went, Amy, I'm going to be on Arsenio Hall show, you know. Wow. So anyway, uh, I sent all the information up. Uh, and, and the next day, uh, they, we were in contact with each other, the, you know, the people who put all the uh, scheduling together. The day after that, I saw on the news the Arsenio Hall show got canceled. <laughs> there was my chance. <laughs> Arsenio. So anyway, and then they, they said, regrettably, you know, the show has been canceled. Okay, that's, a, you know, oh, oh well. <laughs> so, but the Champagne Room yielded a lot of compositions because oftentimes I would be there and I would get an opportunity to improvise for four hours. It was four hours a night. So um, I would make up, you know, compositions. But the one that stuck was this one, and that's why I called it In the Champagne Room because literally it was kind of put together in that room. It, it has more of a, a kind of a real Latin-y kind of sound to it, and it does have a track. And so on this track, you're going to hear uh, other instruments playing as well. Okay. Just make sure that's going to sound. So remember, that other guitar on there, that's me too. <laughs> so.
peaceful piece of music, another commissioned work, and um, I was in a very peaceful mood when composing this piece of music, and uh, I enjoy it. I, I like it, so I hope that you do too.
about almost 8.30. The last piece that I'd like to play for you is another uh, original composition. Uh, it's entitled, I gotta remember what the title is. Oh yes, Chador, that's right. The title is Chador. And what that is in, uh, in, in the Middle East is the veil. It's, it's, what it's, it's called a veil. Now, the little story behind this piece of music is that my, uh, my partner, George Svoboda, who I played many, many years with, probably close to 30, if not longer, our first album was called Shiroko Desert Wind. And that album for us, our first CD together, did so well that uh, we were able to finance our second album and really do whatever we wanted. So we thought this next, this second album of ours is going to be our Sgt. Pepper. You know, we're going to we're going to go for it. So we hired all of our friends. You know, our bass player, the, you know, the sitar players, everything. We had so many different instruments on this album. And um, as we were getting to finishing it up, we had uh, we had a CD release party, and we realized we, we don't we're, we got to really make sure that we get everything recorded and, and, and mixed and you know in production, and uh, we didn't have enough songs. So so George goes, you got one? I I, I think I'm well out of songs. I, okay, I said I'll come up with something. I said what should I do? And he says why don't you do kind of a Latin sounding thing, you know? But maybe put a little bit of a uh, some Moorish or Arabic stuff in there too. And I said, okay, you're on, you know, so I'll do that. And then, uh, so I composed this piece and you'll hear a lot of Latin feel to it, mostly. But in one little section of it, it sounds a little bit like you're going to the Middle East when you hear some of the, some of the little scales in there. Uh, and then of course, he came up with the, the title. He says, why don't we call it Shador? And I said, what does that mean? And he says, it's, it means the veil. I said, hey, that's great, I, I like that. So that's, that's what it became. So folks, I hope that you enjoyed being here this, this evening. I, I know I started off with a classical, and we usually do classical compositions here, or classical pieces, so I knew I was taking a little bit of a chance, but thank you so much for allowing me to let you hear some of my own music too, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you so much.